Hi folks, some more Chapter 7 problems. Starting from rest, a 93.0 kilogram firefighter slides down a fire pole. The average frictional force exerted on him by the pole has a magnitude of 810 newtons. His speed at the bottom of the pole is 3.40 meters per second. How far did he slide down the pole? Alrighty. Now, here's how this works. Um, he has a potential energy at the top of the pole. So he's standing at the top of the firehouse and there is a fire pole and he comes down at the bottom um, and where he's going whew, at some sort of a speed of 3.40 meters per second. So he has potential energy at the top, he has kinetic energy at the bottom, but these two are not exactly equal because along the way he also has lost some energy to friction. So here is the big idea. The big idea throughout all these problems is conservation of energy. The potential energy at the top is going to be equivalent to the kinetic energy at the bottom plus the amount of energy that he has lost due to friction. So the potential energy at the top is going to be his mass, his height, the acceleration of gravity. Kinetic energy at the bottom is going to be one half mass velocity squared. And the loss due to friction, um, the average frictional force on him is 810 newtons. Um, the loss due to friction, well, loss due to friction, this is work done against friction. And work done against friction, as you know, work is frictional forces times displacement. And we want to know the displacement of the pole. So the work done against friction is going to be the frictional forces times the distance that he slid. So let's put everything in with the idea in mind that we're looking for that distance x, and let's see where we land. OK, um, we know we have a a uh, 93 kilogram firefighter. Um, the pole is an unknown height h. Gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. One half mass, the mass of my fighter, firefighter is 93 kilograms. When he hits the ground, he's going 3.4 meters per second quantity squared. Frictional force on him is 810 newtons times some unknown distance x. All right, let's simplify what we can simplify. So I'm going to take 93 times 9.8, 93 times 9.8, and this is going to give me 911 kilogram meters per second squared newtons times h, that height equals one half, let's say 3.4 squared times 93 times 0.5. So all of this is going to be 538 rounded off, and that is going to be joules, kilogram meters squared per second squared. That's going to be joules, plus 810 newtons times some unknown distance x. Now h, the height of the potential energy, is exactly the same distance of the pole x. So these two values, even though in this equation have different variables, they are the same distance. And because we're looking for x, I am going to go ahead and call them both x, and I am going to move them to the same side of the equation. So 911n times x. I'm going to move this to the other side of the equation, so minus 810 newtons times x equals 538 joules. So I'm going to take 911 minus 810. I'm going to have 101 newtons times x equals 538 joules, or x is going to be 538 joules divided by 101 newtons, 538 divided by 101 newtons, and I end up with 
three meters because a joule is a newton meter divided then by a newton and I end up with meters and that is the height of the fireman's pole and that is about eh, about 15 feet so that's a good high pole all right let's do another problem at point A on the following roller coaster, and this is point A, the car has a velocity of 6.4 meters per second and is 36 meters off the ground. So this distance right here is 36 meters. If at point B it is 19.5 meters off the ground, 19.5 meters off the ground, and the velocity of, what is the velocity of the car at point B. The velocity of the car at point A is 6.4 meters per second. And assume that the coaster car has lost 9% of its total energy between A and B due to frictional losses. Now we're going to treat this as the big idea here of course is conservation of energy, conservation of energy, and the concept is going to be the energy that the roller coaster car has at A is going to be equivalent to the energy that the roller coaster car has at point B. Now at A, what kind of energy does this car have? Well it has position and it has speed. So it's going to have potential energy at A and it's going to have kinetic energy at A. This is going to be equal to potential energy at B plus kinetic energy at B. Now that's the big idea. Now how do we deal with the there is a 9% loss of energy between A and B? If I do a subtraction somewhere, quite honestly the math gets messy. So what I'm going to do instead of a subtraction is I'm going to do a multiplication. Which one of these is bigger, A or B? Which one of these has a larger value, the energy of A or the energy of B? Well, it's going to be the energy of A because there's some loss by the time you get down to B. So in order to make this work, I'm going to say that energy at B is going to be equal to, equal to 91%, 91% of the energy of A is going to equal the energy at B. And that's how I'm going to deal with that 9% loss. So whatever I get here, times 91% is how I'm going to mathematically deal with this. All right, now we're ready to put our numbers into our equation. So here goes. Potential energy at A is going to be mass height of A, acceleration of gravity, plus one-half mass velocity at A squared all of this, 91% is times 0.91, equals mass height of B, acceleration of gravity, plus one-half mass velocity at B squared. Now, we've talked about this in class. The fact that mass um, does not matter on roller coasters. The mass on roller coasters doesn't matter if you've got them, if all the cars are full of, or if all the cars are empty. And that's because acceleration of gravity is independent of mass and mass will fall out of the equation. So let's simplify this. So I'm going to have height of A, acceleration of gravity, plus one half velocity at A squared, all of this times 0.91 is going to be height of B times acceleration of gravity plus one-half the velocity at B squared. Now let's put numbers in. The height at A is 36 meters times gravity 9.8 meters per second squared plus one-half the velocity at A 6.4 meters per second squared and all of this, all of this, big parentheses, times 0.91. Height of B, 19.5 meters. Acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. Plus one half, we're solving for velocity at B 
squared. Now if you take everything on the left side of the equation, all of this stuff, including the times 0.91, I end up with 340 meters squared per second squared. 19.5 times 9.8 gives me 191 meters squared per second squared plus one-half velocity at b squared. To solve for this, I am going to subtract 191 from both sides. And when I do that, I'm going to end up with 149 meters squared per second squared is going to equal one-half velocity at b squared, or the velocity at b is going to be the square root of uh, 2 times 149 meters squared per second squared, or the velocity at b is 17.3 meters per second. There you go. That's not too bad at all. Um, let's do one more. I think we've got the time. I'm just going to check. Oop, we got the time to do one more, so let's do it. Number 15. If the radius of the loop-to-loop -loop on the above coaster is 8.6 meters, so the radius in the above coaster is 8.60 meters, what is the minimum speed necessary for the passengers to stay on the loop-to-loop? -loop? So minimum speed for the passengers to stay on the loop-to-loop. -loop. We have to revert back to stuff we learned in a previous chapter. Minimum velocity to stay on a vertical loop is the acceleration of gravity times radius. So let's do that. So this is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared times the radius 8.6 meters. When I do that, the velocity minimum to stay on is 9.18 meters per second. That's the answer for part a. Will the passengers stay on the loop-to-loop? -loop? Well, when we calculated the velocity up above, we found 17.3 is the velocity at the top of the loop. Minimum was 19, was, excuse me, 9.1a. So will the passengers stay on? Yep, no problem. They're going to stay on and uh, they're going just fine. How many g's will they experience at the top of the loop due to the ride? Well, in order to calculate g's, g's we have to figure out centripetal acceleration. So let's go ahead and do that. So centripetal Centripetal acceleration is v squared over r, so velocity at the top of the loop-to-loop -loop that they're actually going is 17.3 meters per second, quantity squared. We were told the radius of that loop is 8.6 meters, so centripetal acceleration here is going to be 34.8 meters per second squared, and g's is acceleration divided by the acceleration of gravity, so 34.8 meters per second squared divided by 9.8 meters per second squared, and that's going to be equal to 3.55 g's. Is that a lot? Yeah, that's a little bit of a lot. That's not a coaster for wimps. All right, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.